good afternoon everyone i guess a lot of common names except some very particular names like unite and everyone all right so <coughs> this uh, session <coughs> is all about revising entire algebra and we'll do, the, do it through some also people um, think algebra is very difficult yeah of course it is but i would say it is the most scoring and it is that subsection of quant in which you can do the things quickest all right and also confirm the audio and video ones thank any thanks any gate for that is there a lag okay <clears throat> so through different questions and without much ado without spending more time let us go to the questions directly so we have this question the first question which says if the system of simultaneous equations has no simultaneous solution what is the value of n also what value of m is not acceptable so <clears throat> this is the first unit first chapter and the first chapter is linear equations right we have two uh, set, set of equations what happens exactly let's say it is uh, a1x a1x um, plus uh, b1y all right is equal to c1 and then we have a2x plus b2y is equal to c2 so here you can see a1 and a2 are the coefficients of x and uh, b1 and b2 are coefficients of y and c1 c2 are the constant terms okay this is how generally a linear equation is written isn't it all of you know the basic uh, general equation of it there is x there is y there are coefficients and there is a constant term so <coughs> <coughs> sorry all of us know how to solve it by substitution by cancellation of elimination of any of the variables there are two ways to solve it and in some cases solution is possible in some cases it is not possible all right so let's write about case 1 in case what happens i know a lot of you can solve this question but let us revise everything once so if a1 upon a2 is equal to b1 upon b2 is equal to c1 upon c2 so everything is proportional in this case what will we get anyone <coughs> what will we get things will it cancel out so basically we will have we will have infinite solutions yes or no <coughs> infinite solutions <coughs> right graphically speaking the two lines will be intersecting over each other by the way what is solution the solution of two the solution is basically the intersection the point of intersection of two straight lines but here as you can see in case one both the lines are same so they will be overlapping with each other so if this is the first line the second line will also be lying on this only so line one and line two both will be same all right that is the graphical interpretation so i will tell you each and everything about this <coughs> so lines are overlapping or we can say coincident lines these two lines are overlapping that means they are intersecting at all the possible points and because the length of a straight line is infinite so we'll be having infinite solutions is that understood so both the lines are overlapping that means they are intersecting at all the possible points cool that is the graphical graphical interpretation of it <coughs> if i talk about <coughs> case 2 all right here what happens a1 upon a2 is equal to b1 upon b2 is not equal to c1 upon c2 this is a weird case you know why because if you start doing it you will find no solutions at all right there will be no solutions because the left hand side of the <coughs> of the system left hand side that is a1 left side where we have x and y that will be cancelled but the right hand side would not be cancelled okay 
Understood. So graphically, graphically, if I draw this, what's going to happen? When we have no solution, what does that mean? That the lines are not intersecting at any point. At any point, that means we'll be having two lines which not intersect anywhere. That means that those lines will be parallel. Do you understand that? We'll have parallel lines. Is that cool? So <clears throat> algebraically and then graphically, I'm doing both the things. Very good, very good. Okay, pura hamara ek par revision bhi ho jayega. Perfect. What has to be the case three? Case three. Case three. Here, a one upon a two would not be equal to b one upon b two. Here, I'll get a unique solution. There will be one point of intersection. This is the first line. Second line will be something like this. So this is the point of intersection, and that is what we call as <coughs> unique solution. Is that clear? Intersecting lines. Perfect. All of you got that. Nothing else here. And now we can solve the question, of course. Great, great, great. I'm so happy. And I'm I'm and also <coughs> try to make the entire notes of this session so that if you want to have a quick revision, you can just go there. The question says has no solution. Anna? No solution. What is the value of n? So no solution kis case mein when lines are parallel, right? Lines are parallel. That means a1 upon a2 is equal to b1 upon b2 is not equal to z1 upon z2. Is that right? Archit, not very good, <coughs> but okay, you understand this, right? So, a1 is 3, 3 upon n is equal to minus 2 upon 9, should not be equal to 6 by m. All right. So, if I solve these two by cross multiplication, 9 goes here, minus 2 comes here, so we'll have n is equal to minus 27 by 2. Okay? This will be the value of n. And what's not acceptable for M? Kya acceptable nahi hai. Chalo, let's solve these two now. So if I cross multiply, what do I get? 9 goes there. 2 se 3 bar kar jayega. So minus 27. So M should not be equal to minus 27. All right. All of you got that? You're welcome, Archit. <clears throat> and today, algebra will be finished and then we'll start geometry uh, the next week for batch two. Okay, cool. We are done. And we have revised one very basic and fundamental and important concept over here. Coming to next question. If 12 cuckoos, you know what is cuckoo? Coil, coil bird. Cuckoos sit on each branch of a tree. Six cuckoos do not have a place to sit. If 15 cuckoos sit on each branch, two branches are left vacant. What are the number of cuckoos and number of branches? So what I normally do, I do not use X and Y that commonly. I use the <coughs> letters here only. So I'll use C for cuckoos and B for branches. Okay. And B for branches. That is what I'm going to use. Let's all together here. All right. By the way, the people uh, who will be watching afterwards the recording, I'm sure a lot of you might be watching it re in recording. You can pause, solve it, and then look at the solution. Well, so C cuckoos and B branches. 12 sit on each branch of a tree. Okay, okay. Kya uh, kare? Har branch pe bara bethi hoi hai. Six cuckoos will not be having any place to sit. Kya matlab is baat ka? Iska matlab ye hai ki if there are B branches and 12 sit on every branch, there will be 12 B cuckoos sitting on the branches and 6 would not have any place to sit. So basically 6 will be the remainder. Is that understood? 12b plus 6 will be the remainder. Tanya, my, oh, Tanya, if you are, I probably you are uh, watching this on YouTube. I was talking to uh, <coughs> the students who are in batch 2 of iQuanta. For them, they are, because we have taken so many hours of workshop, this is an, a marathon in which we'll do things quickly. Okay, I hope you got, get that. 12b plus 6. 
this is the value of C. All right, cuckoos. And if you think you could 